The manager mocks me for not being able to speak. Sorry, I completely forgot about you. I thought I had won too many tickets and three years away. I was the one who planned the whole company trip and arranged all the plane tickets. He threw away my ticket. As I held my head in confusion, the manager said to me, just quit already, old man. I had let the manager handle the tickets because he insisted on it, but it was a mistake. It was clear he intended to exclude me from the trip. Although I was frustrated, I decided to leave as the manager wished. All right, I'm leaving, I said, turning my back on the manager and the others. From now on, the rest of the staff would enjoy the trip without me in more ways than one. With that in mind, I contacted someone. Soon after, the manager returned, his previous smug attitude gone, replaced with a pale, trembling face. My name is John Wilson, a 45-year-old office worker. Since my mother passed away due to illness when I was five, I lived with my grandmother and father at my father's family home. My father was busy with work and rarely at home, but I never felt lonely because I had my grandmother. She ran a barber shop, and I spent all my time there. I did my homework and ate my snacks at the barber shop. Whenever my hair grew long, my grandmother would cut it. The customers at the barber shop were fond of me, and I received a lot of affection from many people. Every year, we took a trip together. One of the barber shop's customers owned a resort hotel and gave us discount tickets every year. Though I realized this as an adult, as a child, I eagerly anticipated this annual trip where our family could relax. Even my father would take time off work for this trip, making it a precious time for me. When it came time to choose my career path, I was very conflicted. I decided to follow in my father's footsteps into the service industry. I also wanted to take over my grandmother's barber shop, but due to its aging structure, it was decided that it would end with her generation, which made my decision easier. When I expressed my desire to work as a hotel manager at the resort that provided us with cherished family time, my grandmother and father supported my decision to go to college. Plans might change and there are still many people in America who value academic credentials. My father strongly insisted that it wouldn't hurt to go to college, but I had a specific vocational school I wanted to attend. When my grandmother and father heard my wishes, they supported me and covered my tuition and lodging expenses. I enrolled in a vocational school specializing in tourism and business. I thoroughly studied services like hotels and travel as well as hospitality. During long breaks, I participated in internships leading to fulfilling days and I secured a job at the resort hotel I had hoped for. My grandmother and father were very happy about this. I started my new life with the determination to work hard from scratch as a hotel manager. In the first year, I learned the workflow of the hotel. From the second year onward, there were personnel transfers based on suitability. Of course, this included relocations, which made it difficult to see my grandmother and father but they always supported me. Despite the many unfamiliar tasks, I was supported by my colleagues and superiors, allowing me to smoothly navigate my professional life. Observing customers, understanding whether they were enjoying themselves or facing difficulties from their expressions, and offering appropriate assistance if needed was a challenging task. At first, I was so overwhelmed with my work that I couldn't notice anything about the customers, but after a while, my perspective broadened. Let me carry your luggage. Of course, I did the basics, but I also sometimes asked, would you like me to take a family photo? My seniors and superiors taught me about customer service in detail, and I steadily climbed the ranks. I worked in both resort hotels and affiliated business hotels, from cities to rural areas, serving not just tourists, but also business clients, one day, my supervisor called me in. Wondering what it was about, I learned that as my experience grew, I was told, if there's a location you'd like to challenge yourself in, you can request a transfer. If there's something you want to study more, take the initiative. So I requested a transfer to a hotel and decided to return to my hometown after 25 years. 
Now I had to pass on the experience and knowledge I had gained to juniors and subordinates. I realized I had reached that age. I transferred to the hotel in my hometown as I had hoped. If I worked hard for a few years, I would likely get a managerial position. I became even more motivated at work. On my first day of transfer, I greeted all the departments in the hotel, including the kitchen, linen room, and office. Lastly, I greeted the front desk staff where I was assigned. Nice to meet you. My name is John Wilson, and I will be working here starting today. I look forward to working with you. As I bowed deeply, my colleagues applauded. However, the manager's reaction was different. The manager, Chris Smith, is 43 years old. Rumor has it that he kept refusing transfers but steadily got promoted, so despite being in the same age group as me, he had already become a manager. Why would someone your age get transferred to this rural hotel? I don't even have to ask to know it's a demotion. He laughed, then made a sour face, saying, I don't know what you did, but you'll work hard, heater, loser. I was taken aback, never expecting to hear such words from a younger person on our first meeting. Judging by my colleagues' frowns, it seemed the manager had a habit of looking down on people. Although I had requested to come to this hotel, I didn't bother to explain that. If the manager was the only one causing trouble, I could endure it. As long as I could get along with my colleagues, there wouldn't be any problems. However, within a few days of my transfer, my colleagues began to join in on the manager's harassment. Was I fortunate to have been surrounded by good people before, or was this the norm? Despite returning to my hometown and making my family happy, I felt oppressed every day. Greetings were completely ignored. The worst incident was not being informed about the arrival of a group of guests. Manager, this is unacceptable. Why didn't you tell me about the group reservation? You may not like me, but don't do things that inconvenience our guests. I almost double booked another reservation. Luckily, a colleague took over the phone call when I was about to make the reservation. If I had taken the call alone, I would have booked it. However, the manager just snickered at my anger. It's your fault for not sharing information with your colleagues, isn't it? Everyone else knew about the group reservation, right? The front desk staff nodded in agreement with the manager. All I could do was clench my fists tightly. Maybe the manager worked hard to get his current position, but no matter how hard he worked, using his position to manipulate subordinates or give orders they couldn't refuse was wrong. This time it was the manager who instructed that I not be informed. He was far from being a good manager. Since then, I've become more anxious. I repeatedly checked reservations and inventory to ensure no inconvenience to our guests. One day, there was a survey about the destination for our company trip at our hotel. We close all facilities once a year for a company trip. The company trip was created with the president's hope of deepening employee relationships and relieving fatigue. The manager ordered me to compile the survey results, choose the destination, and plan the trip. Remember, the destination has to be somewhere we can fly to. Just hurry up and plan the trip and get the tickets. As a result, the destination was decided to be Hawaii, and I started planning the trip while handling my usual tasks. I tried to plan during my free time, but planning a group trip alone was too much. So I went to a travel agency to get recommendations and plan for the group. I made reservations where possible and noted the flight times since the company card was used to purchase the tickets. Sometimes I wondered why I had to use so much effort for everyone else, but I told myself everyone was trying hard to endure the manager's pressure. Even though the company was covering the travel costs, there was a set budget, so creating a plan within that budget that would satisfy everyone was challenging. Having come this far, all I could do was hope everyone would enjoy it. I submitted the compiled travel plan to the manager. Here is the travel plan. All that's left is to finalize the flight and hotel payments, so if there are no issues, I'll proceed with the bookings. Please confirm. The manager glanced over the documents and then threw them back at me. 
Why do I have to follow your arbitrary decisions for everything? I couldn't believe my ears. It was the manager who told me to decide everything. From the way he said it, maybe I should have made several plans. Honestly, I didn't have the time, and everything was already booked. I had other work to do, so I really wanted to avoid reworking the plan. I've already booked the banana boat and kayak. Redoing the plan will take more time. Stop whining. Then what do you want me to check? I was stunned by the manager's outburst. My mind shifted to thoughts of leaving early to visit the travel agency or maybe taking some time off to handle other tasks and plan a new itinerary. However, the manager snatched the documents back from me. This will do. Good job. I just need to call and finalize the payments, right? The manager had the authority to finalize the payments, but even though I would handle the follow-up after the payments, the manager insisted on doing it himself. I wondered what had changed his mind, but maybe he felt he needed to be involved in the trip, planning to some extent. I bowed my head and asked the manager to finalize the payments for the flights and hotel. Since he approved the plan, I had no complaints. The day of the company trip arrived. To check attendance, I sat on the bench at the meeting place with the roster. As the meeting time approached, employees gradually gathered. Manager, everyone is here, I told the manager. He then started distributing the itinerary and checking QR codes for the flights. I was impressed by the switch from tickets to QR codes, but the manager ignored me. Excuse me, manager, what about my materials and ticket? What? You never had one to begin with. The manager mocked me for being unable to speak. Is it that was your ticket? I see. The manager clapped his hands in fake realization and laughed mockingly. Sorry, I completely forgot about you. I thought I had one too many tickets and threw yours away. The others around us laughed at me as well. I was stunned. I had planned the entire trip and arranged all the flight tickets. He threw away my ticket. As I tried to make sense of this, the manager spoke to me. Just quit already, old man. I had let the manager handle the tickets, which was a mistake. He probably intended to exclude me from the start. Though I felt frustrated, I decided to leave as the manager wished. If I hadn't entrusted him, this wouldn't have happened. All right, I'm leaving. I turned my back on the manager and the others. Now the rest of the staff would enjoy the trip without me in more ways than one. I contacted someone shortly after the manager returned. Hey, what's going on? His previous attitude vanished, replaced by a pale, trembling face. It seemed the flights for everyone had been cancelled. Other employees follow behind the manager, running to catch up. What a huge mistake you've made. Are you talking about yourself? The voice of the chairman from behind made the manager shiver. I'm surprised a company trip without the vice president and future general manager is unthinkable. The manager turned towards the voice, his face going pale and starting to tremble. I got a call from the travel agency. They asked if it was okay to cancel one ticket. I thought someone had taken a day off, but it seems that's not the case. The manager seemed shocked, either by the term vice president or future general manager, and couldn't close his mouth. Chris, could you explain what's going on? Interestingly, John's ticket was the one that got cancelled. Well, I think John might have forgotten to include his own ticket. The chairman furrowed his brow. There's no way someone like him, also the vice president, would make such a mistake. A person who makes such errors couldn't be a general manager. What do you mean? John is the vice president and the future general manager. Not just the manager, but the surrounding employees were also murmuring. Well, it's understandable you didn't know. Unlike the president, he doesn't often put himself in the spotlight. The chairman handed a hotel brochure to the manager and pointed to the section with my name on it. Seeing it with his own eyes, the manager collapsed in shock. I started dating Jennifer, the chairman's daughter, shortly after joining the company. While I was contemplating proposing, Jennifer revealed she was the chairman's daughter. Fifteen years after joining the company, at age 35 I married Jennifer. 
The chairman then offered me the vice president position, and I rotated through various hotels in the group as part of my training. When I requested a transfer to the local hotel, it was because the chairman instructed me to choose the hotel where I would become the next general manager. I had always decided that if I climbed the ranks, I would work at the local hotel. This was the hotel where the customers of my grandmother's barber shop, who adored me, used to work. I had been working with the desire to repay those customers. The customer in question was actually the chairman himself. While I worked as a regular employee on the surface, providing services to guests alongside other employees, I handled vice president duties behind the scenes, but mostly supported the president without taking on major tasks. By the way, the president is my wife, Jennifer. Because of this, most employees were unaware of my true identity. The chairman, who occasionally tours hotels nationwide, frequently visits this headquarters hotel. However, I rarely spoke with him at work. Though I was busy with work, we often had family meals on weekends, so there was no need to talk at the workplace. So this mistake was John's fault, right? Looking at the records, it seems like it was finalized with one less person from the beginning rather than a cancellation. The chairman questioned the manager. It seemed the manager's habit of using me as a stress outlet had finally caught up with him. Unable to respond, the manager just stood there, pale-faced, as the chairman handed him a thick report. This is a report of your past problematic behaviors. My son, when he first joined the company, mentioned that you burdened him with menial tasks. Although things worked out with my daughter as president and her husband John as vice president, if it weren't for her, we would have struggled with a successor. As the chairman said, Jennifer's brother had left the company due to the manager's harassment. I had heard about it, but I was unaware that the culprit was the manager. I was entrusted with everything from planning the trip to making reservations. The final payment was left to the manager. Normally, just processing the payment wouldn't result in such an error. Additionally, when I checked with the airline, they said they received a request to reduce the number by one, which was different from the initial estimate. Not only I, but also the employees present turned sharp gazes toward the manager. It was understandable, as they had planned to start the trip early but were now caught up in the chairman's reprimand. By the way, I had entrusted this to him this time. I'm busy, so I left the final payment to him. The manager tried to shift the blame onto a nearby employee. However, the manager had no allies left. The employees shook their heads in denial. You never learn, do you? The chairman's angry voice made the manager tremble. This was how he had always pinned his mistakes on others. The chairman read aloud from the report, listing the manager's wrongdoings, forcing menial tasks on others, giving no work, ignoring greetings. These were just a few of his misdeeds. The manager's eyes darted around, his mouth opening and closing silently. This report is based on interviews with people you harassed, including myself. They were reluctant to recall these painful memories, but when I said it would be documented, they cooperated immediately. Some even kept recordings, anticipating this day might come. I played a recording on the voice recorder. The familiar sound of the manager's insults played back. Then the chairman bowed deeply and apologized to all of us employees. I am truly sorry. It is also my responsibility for not creating an environment where employees can work comfortably. With the chairman bowing in apology, the manager had nothing more to say. Thus, this year, the president announced to all employees that transfers could not be refused without a valid reason. When someone stays in the same department for years, they get too comfortable or stuck in their ways. Job rotation exists to prevent this, and this incident reaffirmed that. The manager was demoted and transferred to a resort hotel in Hawaii. Hawaii resort hotels seem glamorous and fun, and they are. However, that's why staff skills and teamwork are crucial. Can the manager handle it? The chairman is probably testing him. Later, I became the general manager of the headquarters. My subordinates apologized for laughing along with the manager, 
It was likely self-preservation. My grandmother and father were worried about how worn out I looked, but they were delighted when I told them I became the general manager. Who would have thought John would end up working with Michael and as a general manager? You've surpassed your father. Seeing their happy faces made me happy too. My grandmother intended to close her shop, but my father took over when I joined the hotel. Seeing me working hard, my father felt he couldn't be left behind, so he quit his job, enrolled in a vocational school, and earned his qualifications. To my surprise, the chairman was a regular customer at the barber shop. Every time the chairman came for a haircut, my father would ask about my work performance and get updates on my progress. The support of these important people helped me overcome the sadness of losing my mother. From now on, I want to be the one to support these important people.